Hey everyone, Luke here from Solid State Logic, and today we're excited to share with you the next chapter in the evolution of SSL 360 and the UC1 controller with the 360 Link bus compressor plugin and 360 Link version 1.1. After the rousing success of 360 Link earlier this year, we know some of you out there have been desperate for the opportunity to get hands on with mapping your favorite plugins to the UC1's bus compressor section as well. So with 360 Link Bus Comp, you can now map any plugin to the bus compressor section of your UC1 controller and use them alongside all your other 360 powered plugins inside the 360 mixer. With Link Bus Comp, many third party plugins can also map to the UC1's gain reduction meter. And we also provide a selection of factory mappings too to get you started with a range of popular bus compressor plugins straight away. What's more, we've brought some fantastic updates to the 360 Link plugin also, with the ability now to map to the channel strip dynamics metering for compatible third party plugins, invert buttons, a GUI overhaul, and some tweaks to streamline using Link in your sessions. Finally, with the 360 Link version 1.8 update, there's added support for 360 Link bus compressor, 360 Link 1.1, and a series of new additions and bug fixes across multiple third party hardware products, which we'll dig into later. So in this video, let's take a close look at getting hands-on with the SSL 360 Link bus comp and see what's new in 360 Link 1.1, so you can utilize the full potential of the UC1 with any plugin in any of your sessions. Let's go. Just like 360 Link, 360 Link Bus is completely free to download, which we can do via the SSL Download Manager available from the Solid State Logic website. The first thing we need to do is to update SSL 360, then install Link Bus Comp and update 360 Link. While we're here, we can also install any other updates that might be available. Once all of your 360 powered software is up to date, we can then jump over to our DAW and begin putting Link Bus Comp to work. So now we've installed 360 Link Bus Comp and everything else is up to date, we can move to our DAW of choice and load up Link Bus Comp in the same way that we would use Bus Compressor 2. Simply instantiate the plugin on our channel and then the 360 Link Bus Comp GUI will open up. As you can see, Link Bus Comp begins as a blank slate and lays the controls out in the same layout as our UC1. So to begin, we need to hit the Configure Link dialog box which will open a sidebar view with two tabs labeled Mapping and Plugins. If you've already installed 360 Link, the Plugins field will already be populated with your plugins, but otherwise, if this is your first time with Link Bus Comp or Link, then go to the bottom of the screen and simply hit Scan Plugins to populate our library and wait for Link to finish the scan. Whilst we wait for that, it's worth noting that Link Bus Comp hosts the VST3 versions of your plugins, so make sure that you've got the VST3s of your favorite plugins already installed and rescan your plugin library in Linkbus every time you install a new plugin to keep your library up to date. With our improvements to the plugin scanning, Link will only rescan the new plugins that you've added. It's worth mentioning that 360 Link Bus Comp comes with a selection of factory mappings for Plugin Alliance's BX Townhouse Bus Comp and Vertigo VSC2, Slate Digital's Virtual Bus Compressor FG Grey and FG Red, Waves SSL Comp and API 2500, and UAD's API 2500, Empirical Labs Distressor, Neve 33609C, and both UAD's version of the SSL GBus Comp and GBus Compressor Legacy. So if you have any of these plugins installed on your system, they will show up in your favorites list by default. Once you've finished scanning the library, you'll now see all the available plugins that we can select to be controlled, organized by manufacturer. Within the library window, you'll also notice the star column, where we can select the star next to any plugin we wish to add to our favorites list that will be available from the drop down menu in the GUI center where it says click to load. You'll also see the make current plugin default option, where if we select this, next time we open a new instance of Link Bus Comp, the plugin will be already loaded ready to go. Once we've decided which plugin we wish to use on this channel, and I'll use Slay FG Gray here, we simply need to double click on the name and now the GUI will open next to 360 Link Bus. As this is a factory map, I can now go ahead and hit plugin on the right to switch the view to the loaded plugin GUI instead of the Link Bus Comp GUI. Now we can start using the plugin like normal, but now with full control via the UC1. And if we zoom in on the UC1's display screen, 
you can see the name and value of the parameter clearly displayed so you can make informed changes, such as the makeup gain for precise level matching. If we now head back to the Configure Link tab, let's look at how we can create a bus link map to a plugin and create a user map. Let's grab the XLA3 plugin as an example. At first, you'll notice that we can freely assign any of the parameters of the plugin as shown in the right side window onto the link bus mapping, and we can assign these in a number of ways. Firstly, we can click on a parameter in the hosted plugin GUI to select it, then click on the control parameter in the 360 link bus mapping window to assign the controls. Or, I can select the control parameter in the link bus window where we can see the selected control turn blue, then click on the hosted plugin's parameter we wish to assign. We can also click on a parameter in the hosted plugin window to select it, then click on the control parameter on the right to assign the controls. We can also do this by physically controlling our UC1 hardware to link the parameters by either moving our controller and selecting the parameter, or inversely selecting a control parameter and moving the controller knob we wish to assign, making the mapping process fast and intuitive. As with SSL 360 Link, we can rename any of these parameters by simply double-clicking in the text field and renaming as you feel fit. We can also select Edit Name, Clear This Link, or Clear All Parameter Links, by right-clicking on the mapped parameter and selecting the option from the drop-down menu. You'll also see in the mapping parameters the drop-down for assigned meter data. This option, if available in the hosted plugin, allows us to assign the dynamics metering to our UC1's VU meter, and we can simply click on the parameter and then select the meter in the mapping section. Now you see that the meter on the UC1 is representing our gain reduction perfectly. But if we did need to tweak the meter calibration, we can select the cogwheel here to dial in the perfect match. Now, once we've mapped all the parameters to our controller, we're ready to go. And next time we open this plugin with our 360 Link bus comp, these preferences will be auto-saved under the user mapping. So next time, we can get started using the plugin straight away. Along with 360 Link Bus Comp, we've also brought a number of improvements to 360 Link with version 1.1, with a number of GUI updates to match. So you'll see now the option to configure Link will open up the plugin browser and mappings here on the right. The plugin menu now sorts the plugins by manufacturer type, and any favorited plugins will have a star next to them and added to the favorites drop down under the click to load button here at the top. Again, we have the option here to make the selected plugin our default 360 link mapping by selecting this under the drop down tab. Moving over to the mappings tab, we can also assign the meter data, if available, to map to the UC1's channel strip dynamics, whereby dragging the parameter to the dynamics meter will allow us to have this visually represented on the UC1 controller. And again, we can use the cogwheel to calibrate the meter if required. To improve compatibility with other third-party plugins, we've also added the ability to invert button states. For example, some plugins have a bypass instead of an in, such as Waves SSL EV2. So now we can resolve this by inverting a button to help match the plugin and the UC1 hardware LED states. Further to this, buttons can now cycle through discrete lists of states, so parameters with multiple options can be selected via a button press. So you now see as I cycle through the style profile on the X limit, we can cycle through each parameter for easy auditioning. Like with Linkbus, we can also now switch views between the mapping window and the mapped plugin GUI by selecting either the plugin or 360 mapping windows here in the top left. This new way of viewing the third party plugin or link GUI means that transport commands don't get blocked as there's no secondary window, streamlining your workflow and keeping only the relevant information visible when you're using your mapped plugins. And to finish off this update, we've also made some adjustments to the plugin scanning too, so this should now be quicker and smoother to keep your plugin library in 360 Link up to date. So now let's take a look at the general updates to 361.8. First off, in the 360 plugin mixer window, you'll now have extended pages for visualizing the bus compressor or link bus plugins in your mix. We've removed the limitation of eight bus compressors being controllable via UC1 and extended it so you can now have a maximum of 192 instances of bus compressor 2 and bus compressor link hosted third-party mapped plugins. 
Next, if we move over to our UC1, you'll see when I use the UC1 to control a 360 link mapped plugin, the name of the third party plugin hosted in link is now visible when scrolling with the channel encoder, which is great for when you have multiple instances in the same channel to identify which plugin you are currently controlling. The extended menu will also now give a reference to the control parameter at the top of the screen for quick control assignment when scrolling and gives you a useful parameter label for things like pre and comp mix too. Along with this, a number of bug fixes and under the hood improvements have been implemented, more details of which can be found in the release notes. And SSL 12 users will also find some additional control options added to the mixer page, such as polarity invert and monitor dim when talk is engaged and the ability to adjust mono sum compensation. Again, details of which can be found in the release notes and the updated SSL 12 user guide. Now you've had a chance to get to see SSL 360 Link Bus Comp and Link 1.1 in action. The next step is to go and download it and begin getting to grips with all of your favorite plugins now literally at your fingertips. For more information on SSL 360 Link and 360 Link Bus Comp, just head over to the SSL website to check out the updated UC1 manual, which will expand on everything that we've covered here, as well as more information on the entire SSL 360 ecosystem. Thanks again for watching and look out for more tips, tricks and video tutorials coming soon from Solid State Logic.